Hi everyone. Today we are going to study about the importance of tides. Since tides are caused by the earth, moon, sun positions, which are known accurately, the tides can be predicted well in advance. This helps the navigators and fishermen plan their activities. First one is the importance of tides in navigation. Tidal heights are very important, especially harbors near rivers and within estuaries having shallow bars at the entrance. These bars prevent the ships and boats from entering into the harbor. High tides raise the water level close to the shores. This helps the ships to arrive at the harbor more easily. That is, when high tides occur, the water level rises up. That time is safe for the large ship to enter and leave the harbor. Large ship can easily sail in water when there is high tide. Kandla port is an example for tidal port in India. Kandla port is in Gujarat. Tides generally help in making some of the rivers navigable for ocean-going vessels. So here you can see the picture of a tidal port in Bay of Fundy in Canada. The first image shows the harbor which is active during a high tide and the second image is the inactive harbor during a low tide. There is a link in the description box. Watch it carefully. There you can see a time lapse video of this harbor. Then the importance of tides in fishing. The high tides also help in fishing. Many more fish come closer to the shore during the high tide. This enables fishermen to get a plentiful catch. Here in this image, you can see an area during high tide and low tide. Tides smooth the water in and out of the water bodies. The fishermen pay high attention to the tides and plan their fishing according. When there is a high tide, the smaller fishes do not have control and get carried away by the current. The larger fish move towards these groups to feed on the smaller fish. This is advantageous to the fishermen as they get to catch many big and small fishes in these areas. Next one is desilting. Tides are also helpful in desilting the sediments. Desilting the sediments. Also, they help in removing polluted water from river estuaries. Then other importance of tides. Tides are used to generate electrical power. The countries like Canada, France, Russia and China are generating electrical, electrical power using tides in a potential manner. So in the case of India, India has a coastline of 7500 km where the tidal range was recorded over 5 meters which can essentially capture the potential tidal power. As of March 2017, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy estimated that the country can produce 7,000 megawatt of electrical power in the Gulf of Kambath in Gujarat, 1,200 megawatt of power in the Gulf of Kutch in Gujarat, and also about 100 megawatt of power in the Gangetic Delta of Sundarban in West Bengal. But a recent news shows that India has given up on the development of these tidal power plants. High cost associated with setting up tidal power plants is the reason behind Indian government's decision. So here is the Gulf of Kutch. Here is the Gulf of Kambat. And here the Sundarban. Now let's have a look into some of the characteristics of tides. 
The child bulges on wide continental shells have greater height. When tidal bulges hit the mid-oceanic islands, they become low. The tides have greater height if it is on the wide continental shells and their height is very low on the mid-oceanic islands. The shape of bays and estuaries along a coastline can also magnify the intensity of tides. Funnel-shaped bays greatly change tidal magnitudes. The magnitude of the tides will be greater if it occurs on a funnel-shaped base. You see, in the case of India, the potential sites are Gulf of Kutch, Kambat and Sundarbans. Because of their funnel shape, tidal range is higher than other areas. The highest tides occur in the Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia, Canada. The tidal bulge is 15 to 16 meter in Bay of Fundy. 15 to 16 meter. Tidal height is 15 to 16 meter in Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia. So the highest tides occur in the Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia, Canada. These images show different areas of Bay of Fundy, Nova Scotia during high tides and low tides. Now, let us study about tidal currents. Tides also occur in gulfs. The gulfs with wide fronts and narrow rails experience higher tides. When the tide is channeled between islands or into bays and estuaries, they are called tidal currents. Or in other words, we can define tidal current as the in and out movement of water into a gulf through a channel. The in and out movement of water into a gulf through a channel is called a tidal current. Tidal bore is one such tidal current. Tidal bore is an example for such tidal current. Then what is tidal current? A ti sorry, tidal bore. A tidal bore is a wall of water that surges upriver with the advancing high tide. Here you can see the part of ocean and here is the mouth of a river where a river joins the ocean. During a high tide, the water rushes up towards the river and it makes a tidal bore. Tidal bore. The steep nosed tide crest looks like a vertical wall of water rushing upstream and is known as a tidal bore. The favorable conditions for tidal bore include strength of the incoming tidal wave, slim and depth of the channel and the river flow. But there are some exceptions. The Amazon river is the largest river in the world. It empties into the Atlantic Ocean. The mouth of the Amazon is not narrow, but the river still has a strong tidal bore. A tidal bore develops here because the mouth of the river is shallow and dotted by many low-lying islands and sandbars. In India, tidal bores are common in the Hooghly River. The most powerful tidal bores occur in the Kwangtung River in China. Most powerful tidal bores occur in Kwangtung River in China. Here is an image of tidal bore. In the description box, you can see a link to watch the tidal bore in the Kwangtung River. Please don't forget to see it. So I hope you understood all the facts we discussed in this video. If you have any doubts, please ask me. Take down the notes and study well. Take care. Thank you.